Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this Savage Access Rifle here in 308. This is the one that comes as a package deal with the optic. Everything but the bipod, I added that on there. It's a cheap bipod uh, just to go along with a cheap rifle. I say cheap because it is inexpensive for sure. Uh, some of it is sort of unrefined, which we'll get into here in a little bit in detail. But uh, more importantly, does it perform? You know, I mean, uh, this is a rifle that I bought just because I wanted a, a rifle that was relatively cheap. If it could get good groups, that'd be great. And uh, fire a major caliber, and if I was you know, rock walking through the woods with it. I wouldn't worry about dinging it. I wouldn't worry about it being out in the rain. Um, that kind of stuff. So I think it's it's designed as an entry level gun for the hunter who wants to be able to hit what he's shooting at but doesn't want to spend a thousand dollars to do it. So uh, for that, we're going to check it out and see what it does and see what kind of accuracy we get out of it. Uh, after that, we're going to check out some of the details of the rifle. So without further ado, let's see how this sucker shoots. Time to test the accuracy of this rifle. We got it loaded up with some. Uh, Gorilla ammo, this stuff here is using the 175 grain Sierra Match King bullet. So it's an extremely accurate round. There's no getting around it. If we start missing, it's going to either be me or the gun. So uh, we got a target down range at 100 yards and uh, factory scope, factory everything else on there. No trigger work, no nothing. So let's see how we can do. We'll go top left. Drink some steel. Steel is always more fun. Let's check those groups out. The group we just shot there makes you wonder why you'd buy an expensive 308 rifle. Obviously, it's a very, very respectable group. Taking a look at it with the uh, ruler here. We're getting right around just under three quarters of an inch. Randomly, this is a group I shot earlier in the day when I was getting my zero. Uh, that one there is right at an inch. That was with the grill ammo as well. So certainly seems to be pretty good consistency there uh, and relatively accurate, especially considering the cost of the rifle. Starting out at the rear of the rifle, we do have a rubber butt pad back here to absorb some recoil. It does pretty well. It's pretty good design. Certainly nothing to complain about there at all. We have the uh, sling swivel back here. Moving up to the grip, we have some light texturing here to give you a good grip. And honestly, I have no uh, no qualms at all about the grip here. To me, it feels very comfortable and my hand uh, rests naturally there. The safety is a two position safety. In the rearward position, it's on safe. Push it forward and put it on fire. The red indicates that you're on fire. Um, put it back, put it on safe, run the bolt. You can run the bolt when it's on safe and the safety does not lock the bolt as you just saw there. Speaking of the bolt, let's talk about that. Uh, it, it unlocks with more force than I would expect you'd need for this kind of rifle. So a little bit rough in the unlocking portion, especially when you get right up here on the top, you really do have to sort of muscle it a little bit and that will take you off target if you're trying to run the bolt fast. However, uh, the rearward and forward motion of it very good. Can't complain about that at all. So just one little rough spot there as it's unlocking. Other than that, it's relatively smooth compared to other rifles in its category. To remove the bolt, you just need to put the rifle on fire, pull the bolt back, push down this little tab right here, pull the trigger, 
and your bolt will come out. Simple two log Savage bolt that we're used to seeing on a lot of different Savage rifles out there. And uh, that's really all you need to break it down to for field level maintenance and cleaning. To pop the magazine out, you're gonna wanna hit this latch down here. Pull forward and pull down now. This magazine uh, has actually gone over and been used on a lot of the different Savage rifles out there. It started out, I believe, on the Access or Edge weapon line, but they're using it for a lot of things. It seems kind of chintzy, I guess, the first time you use it, but I haven't had any issues with it. It does lock into place um, without issue. It's a four round magazine. Uh, you can throw one in the chamber for a total of five rounds. Um, certainly more than most folks are going to need for any kind of hunting scenario out there, particularly in 308, but um, not really a whole lot to go out wrong with it. It works just fine. Can't complain about that. The trigger on the rifle definitely leaves something to be desired. Um, take up is pretty, I guess, inconsistent, if you will, and the break is inconsistent as well. So there's not really a, a way to really stage it very well. Start pulling back. There's a little bit of slop in there. And then as soon as you hit that wall, it generally breaks. But like I said, it's somewhat unpredictable. Um, you can see here how it's actually moving. And the resistance take that required has required, I should say, to overcome it is right at about four and a half pounds. So you can see it's sort of flexing there. Again, not the best, and certainly the uh, Accu trigger would be a great improvement, but then why would you buy the more expensive rifle, right? If <laughs> they just gave it to you on this one. But it's certainly workable, as you guys saw when I was shooting out there. You can get decent groups with it. And there are folks out there that have uh, tutorials on YouTube on how to modify it. This one here, straight as it comes from the factory. It's serviceable, but certainly nothing to write home about. On the rear of the bolt, there is a cocking indicator, so that way you know your rifle is ready to fire. When you pull the trigger, it goes forward. And when you run the action, it gets back out. The Bushnell scope on the rifle is a 3x9x40mm by by objective. It's uh, certainly not a great scope uh, by any means, but it is serviceable. Um, you do have quarter MOA adjustments here underneath the cap turrets and the adjustments. They're pretty positive. I mean, you can't really complain about that. Um, one thing I do recommend if you guys are going to get this is that you absolutely uh, remove the scope and loctite everything down. It was not loctited when we got it in. And uh, while it did hold zero, I took it out there just to see if it would. Um, it held zero, but I wouldn't really trust it. Um, the scope, though, does come bore sighted to the rifle. And this one here was only two inches off at 100 yards so from the factory. So you can't complain about that. It'll get you on paper quick. So that's certainly a good thing. Uh, there's a duplex reticle in there. Nothing fancy, no parallax adjustments, so if you get out of distance, you got to make sure your head's in the right position or else you're going to start having some serious parallax issue. But the scope is serviceable. Like I said, you guys saw the groups earlier. Um, for what it is, it works and does its job just fine. The barrel is a 22-inch carbon steel barrel. It's got a 1 in 10 twist on there, so for those of you familiar with 308 will know that it will stabilize a wide variety of different ammo out there, different weights, and that's a good thing. Uh, folks who are buying budget rifles aren't necessarily going to be buying the top high-end ammo to run through it often, so anything from 150 grains on up, so far in my shooting, it's stabilized just fine and gotten decent accuracy, accuracy with. Um, one thing that we want to point out here is the way the stock interfaces with it. It is free-floated, but particularly when using a bipod, uh, you don't want to load that bipod up too much, and here's why. Um, you can kind of flex the barrel down, and it makes contact very quickly with the um, stock here. So that obviously will cause some accuracy issues if you do that. So just fine to use the bipod like we've done here, but don't really you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it and really load your bipod because you can have some accuracy issues with that flex in the barrel and the stock combo. I think I hit all the important points there. Uh, obviously, the budget is going to be the main driver for this gun for a lot of folks. Uh, as you guys saw, groups just fine out there. Not a whole lot to complain about. I mean, you're not going to get top-notch match-grade accuracy. Certainly, if you stepped up and spent, you know, $1,000, $1,500 on a rifle and scope combination, you'd likely see better accuracy. Just do, if nothing else, so the trigger, because the trigger on this one is a little bit rough. Uh, no getting around it, and it is a little bit hard to overcome, but had good accuracy out of it and if you think of the price point of this rifle um really what you're looking at for you know a major caliber like a 308 or in terms of uh competitors out there is really going to be surplus guns you're going to be looking at military surplus guns and this gun for a hunting application for most people is going to be superior for that um i know that's kind of a loaded statement but in reality if, if you're talking about in this budget 
with the capabilities that it has. It's relatively lightweight. I think it comes in right at 6.5 pounds. Um, it's handy and uh, you know, it shoots good groups. It's just a little rough around the edges. Um, no doubt about it. I, would I say that I recommend it for someone who's going to go out there and try to hit, you know, gongs at a thousand yards? Probably not. You're probably definitely going to want a better optic and a better trigger if you're going to be trying to do that. But if you're looking to engage, you know, medium-sized game in North America within 300 yards, it's definitely one I'd take a look at if you're on a budget. If you guys have any questions about this gun or anything else we talk about here on the channel, you can always uh, post below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something, and uh, I hope to see you in the next video.